Hey everyone, Selwyn here from windshrank.com bringing you a quick video on how to make a cheap tire sled. So all you need is a used tire, so if you get your tires replaced you can ask the carp tire people to give you one of your old tires, that's what I did. So I have this spare one here, um, and all you need is an eye bolt and the bolt and some washers. I have various sizes just because they've been lying around the house and they make up enough to stop the weight pulling through. And I just have a little bit of extra, some offcut of wood and some offcut rubber mat just to provide some uh, reinforcement to the inside of the tire to stop the washers poking all the way through. So, all you need is a drill and a bit, and we're just going to drill straight through all of it. <coughs> yep, smells like burnt rubber. Oh, hello. You might want to do this out in the open because it just smells like someone did burnouts inside of the house. But in any case, you want to lay it up this side so the bolt's going through that way through the tire and the washers will be through here and you get some reinforcement that way. Oh. Oh. And then just shove these through the bottom. So the only reason I have this many washers is because that's all I had lying around. So obviously you want the bolt to not go through the washers. If you have one washer that works, that's probably better. And there you go. You have a weight sled for three bucks. And I mean, the cost of a brand new set of tires. But hey, this tire was free. So now we want to get to adding some weight to this tire because no one wants to drag around an empty tire. Um, I didn't know if it would work, so I can't take it out anymore, but I did manage to squeeze a 45, just a standard iron 45 pound plate inside. You kind of just rest it on top and just push it in and it'll eventually fall in there. I wouldn't recommend doing that if you want to use that 45 pound plate again because I don't think I'm getting that out. Uh, an alternative would be to cut out a little bit of the tire there, but in this case it fit right in so really not much of an issue. Uh, if you do want to add some more weight, you can throw in some 25 pound plates on the inside and that'll add some extra resistance. Uh, you could fill the tire up there, and then if that's still not enough weight, you can throw in some bumper plates on the top. And because of this, the increased diameter of the bumper plates, it won't actually fall into the tire. So right now we have uh, 95 pounds inside. Uh, you could probably throw in another 50 pounds there, probably 75 pounds with the right type of weight plate. Uh, and that should be pretty good for some dragging and pulling. So next step is to use a carabiner. I just have a, I just have a cheap one lying around. You can get these from Home Depot. Uh, they're generally rated to hold a lot of weight for construction purposes, so I'm sure I won't exceed that weight limit. And what you also want to pick up from home from Harbor Freight is just a bucket of utility chains. Uh, if you have bolt cutters, it'd make it a lot easier because you can shorten down the length of the chain to however much you need. Um, I don't have any bolt cutters lying around, so I'm just going to have to use the whole bucket in this process. Uh, but in essence, all you do is grab some excess uh, chain link. And then just lay, lay the excess chain into the tire and then you're going to hook one end of the chain to the carabiner. 
and then get some slack at the other end in, and then hook this up to the eye bolt. Okay, so then you just have the chain connected up to the eye bolt, obviously through the carabiner, and then the two ends there. Uh, you're creating a loop at the end of this thing. So you're creating a loop so you have an attachment point so you can hook this onto something and drag it around. So also if you have some battle ropes lying around, uh, they can be used for good uh, tie a sled pulling rather than dragging. So one workout to do with the ropes is just an arm over arm pull, where you just sit there, probably get some bracing in the rack. It's probably a good idea so you have something to pull against, pull the weight to you. Now if you have a garage you can open the door and throw it as low, as far away as you want so that you can use more of the rope. Obviously we're just using it in a limited space here so we're not really getting that much of a workout. But that's an example of an arm over arm pull. Otherwise, I'll show you some more varieties. Another option if you don't want to use the rack, you can just stand there. That way you're getting a bit more full body workout into the equation. So, there you have it, a do-it-yourself tire sled. You can load it with as much weight as you want. I'll get back to you in a couple of months or a couple of years to see if this tire ever runs out of rubber. One thing to note is if you are doing it outside on a tarmac type surface and you do this a lot in a hot day, it will smell like burning rubber outside, much like it did when you drill through the tire. So if you're outside, obviously it won't be that much of a difference, but just be aware of that smell that comes up. So I assume it's degrading the tire quite quickly or not. I don't know how thick tires are. So, however long this will last you, it only cost you $3 and a brand new set of tires. So I've used this tire for about a week now, probably taken out maybe three or four times. Uh, as we can see, not much is happening on the other side. So I imagine you get years and years out of use of a single tire on one side. And if randomly you're able to bust through this tire, you could just flip it over and drag it on the other side. So extra double amount of years out of a tire doing things they're not meant to be doing. Uh, yeah, the tread's still pretty good. So if you need it for a regular tire, don't use it as a regular tire because you've damaged the side. This has been someone from Wind Strength and remember, a better life through strength.